today it was so cold again that we continue our training with sticks and we ended off class with some uh, hooper looper or some sens sens uh, sensitivity drills. And so I was telling Charlie and a couple other students that um, the problem with a lot of grappling art is that they rely on grabbing the jacket with a clinch, but during the fight, you're getting punched, you're getting punched and stuff, right? And so there's no bridge in between. And so you gotta have some kind of bridge in between. And so the two type of bridge that we use is, uh, it comes from Filipino martial art and Wing Chun, right? The problem with Wing Chun is that they build a whole system on sticky hand or chi sao, right? And so it's a concept and they built it, the whole system around that. And uh, I think it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot, um, it, 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 there's a lot of genius in, Bruce Lee said that when you cross the river, you don't carry the boat on your shoulder. You leave the boat in the river, right, on the river. And so a lot of times we would learn a martial arts style and then we don't have the courage to leave it, right? In other words, this style gave me the insight or the muscle movement for this, and that's it. It's not the end all and be all. And accomplish this task, let's move on. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of times we end up falling in love with our martial art, it's almost like a cult, it's almost like a religion, right? So anyways, let's get back to this. Um, I wanna show some uh, hoopa lupa, some tying and tying, uh, this Filipino concept into submission and joint lock. And these are stuff that I have taught to some of my students who are in law enforcement or worked in the jail, and I showed it to them, and a few of them came back and said, hey, I pulled it off. You know, I was arresting somebody, and I did the move that you showed me, and it worked great, you know? So here's how it looks, okay? We're gonna start out really simple for now. We're gonna start out like a lever, okay? So he's gonna put a lever right over my head, like chopping. And then we just kind of salute and come over. Salute, come over. Salute, come over, right? And notice I'm drawing like a rainbow because it's very important because you're getting smashed with uh, beer bottles, you can punch in the face and stuff. So one more time on this side, you can see. Okay, so this is a basic drill. It's not an NR BR, it's a, it's a concept to, to give you insight into other uh, concepts, okay? So we're here, we solely, okay, so there's a block. So for now, it's just sensitivity. It, this can be like, boom, okay, it can be, go ahead, punch me. It can be boom, like that, okay? So we're dealing with the helmet, okay? There's many ways to deal with the helmet. There's the three-point cover, there's the double block, double side block, there is the stone wall, okay? So one more time, boom, we're here, okay? And then from here, we're gonna dig in, pass. Dig in, pass. Okay, so one more time, we're just gonna create a lever or a partner hits the side of the face and we're blocking and we come over, okay? Now, from here, we can't do this all day, but this is a drill because we wanna get, we wanna feel this because imagine we're fighting the dark alleyway or it's a nightclub, okay? So we wanna know where everything is. So one more time, we're here to here and we're gonna do this drill maybe twice. Now when we get to here, how I like to teach it for beginners is I call it that alligator mouth. Okay, so you're going to here, you're going to alligator mouth, and now you're going to do a really tough uh, arm drag on him, okay? So now you're here, you're going to come in, and you're going to hug tight, okay, let's turn this a little bit, and you see this wedge here? You're going to close the wedge, boom, right here. Now if this is a real fight, you're going to drop it down on him, and with the right training, you're going to have good alignment, you're going to know exactly how to shoulder wedge someone, okay? So one more time, it's a fight, boom, boom, one, two, three, we're gonna open up, okay, and we're gonna grab, and there's a certain point to grab, okay, we're gonna, um, you, you wanna make sure you're, sh you wanna control three, uh, two points, okay, one point above the elbow joint, one point below the elbow joint, and then you wanna create the, the lever here. So this is right here, so if, if I wanted to, I would just hug and smash, okay, so it's boom. So for training, we're here, we're gonna hug, and we're here. So let's just say I'm law enforcement, okay? And he's like rising up, because he's like super strong. He's trying to punch me in the face and stuff. I'm shoving him away, okay? It's because the alignment of his body. You have, you control his balance when you bisect this line, okay? So when you have a bisection of this line, you can manipulate his balance, okay? So let's do it again. We're here to here, okay? We might do it twice. And then from here, we grab, okay. So let's just say you know judo or jujitsu, whatever. Now you can come in for what? 
assignment carry, hip uh, uh, sacrifice throw, the Ponsionaldi. Okay, boom. One more time. With here, overhook, boom, elbow, wrench, come through, back down again. Okay, and obviously, it's all about sensitivity on the day of the fight. You're moving so fast, you're hoping, it's like shooting a lot of bullets, and you're hoping that one of them will catch, okay? One of them will hit. So, one, okay? Let's just say this punch is coming. Go ahead. Two, okay? Now from here, wrench. Now because I have a judo background, I recognize the opportunity to do a quick wrench. Boom, okay? If I wanted to, boom, fall down, and roll him. Alright, so, okay, so one more time, if, if you want to practice this, just think of it like this. Then, you want to separate and create um, arcing motion. So let's just say now it creates arcing motion, go ahead and arc in on me, block, boom, okay, separate. Go ahead one more time, arc, boom, I bring it over, go ahead, arc, boom, over, change my mind, double leg take down. Right? But you see how this blends in, and this is what's missing in a lot of MMA fighters, they're missing this part. Okay? So on the day of the fight, he throws a punch, I duck, and I have my double leg. But watch the way I monitor and control that punch. Go ahead, he throws a punch. Look at this, I'm protecting my head, but I'm not staying upright because his momentum is so strong, especially if I'm giving a lot of weight, I'm going to end up shoving back. Go ahead. As I feel it, I get underneath. Notice this pass. Okay? But this pass may not work. Notice the salute. And then from here, I'm coming in. So one more time. So this is what's missing. I was watching the fight last night. Two wrestlers were just striking each other. And they didn't have that bridge. So one more time. Now, because I'm giving a lot of height, I didn't take advantage of that. So the rule of thumb is if you're small, you make yourself smaller. So in my case, I make myself I level change myself smaller, make more compressed. In Charlie's case, if he was to fight me, he needs to keep his stiff jab. At every range, a straight shot, because he needs to keep me away. So if he's significantly a lot bigger than me and taller than me, his fighting strategy is long or big. Okay, and that's a very important concept. So one more time, we're here. Watch the salute. Okay, now in this case, I get it wrong because I'm talking and not seeing. A lot of times we don't see we end up doing dead pattern. So he throws, but he cocks it. Boom, go ahead, throws, he cocks it. Boom, see that? Okay, so there's a time and place for this. It's, it's like, a, there's a saying, if you have a hammer, everything's a nail. No, just because you have a hammer, not everything's a nail. Sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a wrench, okay? So just because he punched, the angle and the speed and the intention will affect your solution to it. But let's focus back on the sensitivity drill. Okay, now we're here, we're fighting, right? And two guys are like, well, there you go, yes, now do it. Yeah, oh, not bad, it has to be underneath. Yes, good, let's practice that drill, good. Then whenever you're ready, you can push me or wrench. Good, not bad. Okay, see the separation here? He needs to align better, okay? Let's do it again. Good. Too much separation. If there's too much separation and it's slippery, I'm going to yank, I'm going to control. I'm going to control his mass. Okay? One, two, right here. Good. Okay? Number two, you can't see the detail, but he's not putting pressure using his shoulder to manipulate this part. So his goal is to push me here to create a wedge and then from here pull it back and apply pressure to here. Okay? So let's, let's watch it from here. Actually, um, let's go from this side. Okay, so one, let's throw, throw the hooks at me. One, two, oh, let's do it from this side. Right well, here, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hug tight. I'm gonna slide down and see this chest pressure? This is the chest pressure. See this wedge? I wanna push and then I wanna close the wedge and I wanna look down on him. Okay? Now this is really important. If it fails, right, you have a straight line, you're shoving, and you're just beating him up, okay? So this is like super important. You're not, 
it's not a, it's not a hammer and everything's a nail. You're just trying to disrupt so that you have tactical advantage each time. So let me do it to you. Not bad, right here. And this, yeah, that was better, that was better. Good, you feel it? Yeah. Yes, that was better. Okay, number two, notice he kind of turned his body. It's not a turning the body, it's a 90 degree drop down while pumping. So imagine you, uh, we're back in the 1900, we're pumping water from a well. A lot of uh, students, when they observe a move, they miss certain details and they see the big details and then their mind plays tricks on them. So they think it's like a turn. Okay, the problem with the turn is that you're bringing your vector force up. Your whole purpose is to bring the vector force down. So try it again. Vector force down. Yes! Do you feel the difference? And you can feel it too, right? You can feel it coming on a lot quicker, right? No, see? You're turning. Come back. Yeah! Do you, do you feel it? Yeah. You, you can feel it, right? You can feel it when you do it right. Okay. Pushing down for this one. Yeah, so you see how you're turning versus what? This, okay? Okay, a um, little detail. I want you guys to pretend to be combing your hair. Comb your hair, okay? And then as you're feeling the hit, this comes over. As you're feeling the hit, this comes over. As you're feeling the hit, this comes over, okay? So, boom, yes, this comes over. Yes, good. Okay, right there, okay? Now, come back here. Now, if you, let's just say your guy does this on you, really important to bend that a little bit, and you can turn your wrist so you don't get locked. And then you're gonna do sukunagi, uh, uh, scoop throw, scoop drop. You're gonna move your hip behind him. If you can, grab his pants and control the thigh. Boom, all right. So you have a small window to re manipulate this, and how he can, prevent my manipulation is that he needs to create a wedge and he needs to lock down my wrist bone so that it doesn't move. So a lot of people, when they hold the wrist, they think that they're holding it. No, you're anatomically, you can create a rectangular shape to fit into this wrist bone perfectly so that I have a hard time moving, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take advantage of that if he doesn't get it. So one more time, we're going one, two, right here. Learn to lock it in, good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna learn to, can you see the details See my wrist here? I'm gonna learn to turn my wrist and grab it so that I don't get, I'll, I don't get an um, arm bar from here. Then I'm gonna move my hip. Okay, now watch the way I move. It's a dancing move. As I move, I need to control so that this doesn't move away from me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sneak it in. And if I can, I'm gonna sneak my body into here. Boom. All right, so one more time on this other side. Okay, so once your partner gets really good or you want to simulate a real fight, you start whacking them. Okay, now I don't want to do that because I have a broken uh, forearm, but I'll just lightly do it. Boom. Boom. Good. Boom. Now, what happened is I retract, right? When I retract, it doesn't give him a lot of time to do this move. So how he gives himself more time is he moves into the move as I come in. So that gives him a, literally a quarter of an extra beat, okay, or a quarter of a movement. So he comes in on him. Yeah, see the difference, right? So right here, see how the elbow's up? It needs to be in. Now if it's up, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull it and I'm here. Okay, now we're neutral. That means it's arm drag to arm drag. If I wanted to, Judo throw. If I wanted to, all sorts of throw. Boom. Okay. So really important that when you do an arm drag for a small window, you got to make sure that you understand that he can um, counter attack. Okay. So boom, 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 boom. See, it's a lot harder now. And then I go crazy with end. Yes. Good. And then elbows need to be what? End. Okay, now let's just say the elbow's in and he's not aware of that. I just pile heel and then here's my move. Okay. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Okay, two more times. Okay, so how do we do this? You're gonna shield and you're gonna go into the lead side or the open side, the wing side. Okay, so open to my wing side. Right here. So right now he's staying in front. He needs to move into my wing side. Boom, there. Now watch what happened. No, no, no. 
duck underneath it, and it automatically floats over. See, that's how you do it. You don't try to catch it. it, it, it you, you, you're using too much neurons, okay, muscular movement. Instead, you let it go past you, and you incidentally catch it. And that's the move right there, okay? So one more time. He's going to go boom, and notice the level change, okay? Boom, yes, see that? That's how quick it is, right? Now, if he wanted to, he'll draw his sidearm, or if he wanted to, he'll hit the side of my face over and over again, right? And for a split second, unless I know judo, I'm at his mercy, okay? So notice, he's not trying to do this. Go ahead, hit me. He's not trying to catch around here, okay? It's a drill. Conceptually, it's this, okay? So one more time. Conceptually, is I step into the zone, and I pass it over me. Boom, and then I come in, okay? So one more time. So we're fighting, right? We're fighting, and he throws the punch, boom, I'm in. Okay, he throws the punch, boom, I'm in, okay? So if you're a wrestler, or if you're a judoka, or chukari, inside leg trip, from here, you can suplex, or throw, okay? But that's your entry, okay? You're not doing this, go ahead. This is a wrestling practice. And the problem is that in a fight, you're dealing with this type of motion, and like, you know, swing motion, and, and, and what happens, you're gonna lose, you don't have that bridge, you don't have that skill, you don't have that one little tool that will allow you to use your wrestling. So one more time, he throws the punch. This is the shield right here. After a while, you'll learn to perfectly place it, perfectly step in, perfectly to feel it. So you're here, you feel it right here. Now let's go Ochigari, inside leg trip. Boom. And from here, start grounding and pounding. So one more time. So but notice how we started. We started with Hoopa Lupa, or Wing Chun moves. From here, start tightening it up. From here, start feeling, and then you start blending into boxing. So one more time, now notice what I did. I stepped into the impact zone. Impact zone, boom. All right, impact zone, protect my face for a split second, just in case my timing's off, right? Just gave my timing off. Now we're dealing with bisecting of the line. Can you move it this way? Okay, the best time to take someone down is bisection of the line, right here. So I'm gonna change. And I'm going to open and sneak my leg in, and I'm in. Okay, so last time. One, two, uh, oh, outside the camera, come back a Okay, level change. Moving in, bobbing and weaving. Okay, okay go ahead, try that. I'm a little bit shorter than you, so. I'm not shorter than you, so it's a little bit harder. So your goal now is to cut into the wing and then inside ultra glory. Yes. See how quick that is? <laughs> okay, and you gotta keep the arms tighter. So right now, there's too much flare. He's having too much flare. This, okay, so how do you know how much to flare? You gotta be tend to watch your face. And the elbow joint is constantly downward. Then the other side. Right? But I'll, so not like this. See all the opening? This is wrong. People mimic the motions wrong. It's the sensitivity right here. Okay? Go ahead. Good. There. Very nice. See that? So now, he can take me down. Okay? Now if I'm a judoka or whatever, I'm going to try to strip if I can. If I can't strip, if I can't strip, I'm going to strip through the elbow joint right here. And then I'm going to grab the OB and I'm gonna do sumagashi, inside leg trip. Okay, inside sacrifice throw. All right, I didn't have enough pull. Okay, okay, let's try it again, I won't do that. You, you finish off the move. I think I hurt my uh, nails. Yes, good. Okay, but you left, you didn't do this. Boom, and you left your foot behind. Keep it tight, 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 you want like this, it's too wide. Yes, see the difference? Wrong leg. Watch again. 
boom, it's this leg bisecting. You're coming in with this, it's too slow. Boom, that's how quick it is. Okay. So you're gonna go in, step, right here, use this leg. Yes, not bad, okay. One little thing he's missing, he's missing the block. So let me demonstrate the block. I'll over here a little bit. He throws the punch, one, two. I come in, oh, turn this wheel. And I'm gonna sneak my leg in, and I have this block right here, and then I'm, I'm gonna manipulate this hip, I'm gonna chop this, and I'm gonna chop this. You felt it? It's a lot different, right? Okay, one more time. So it's not simply dropping your weight. You are manipulating, think of him as a very simple toy that's made out of strings with little joints, and you're pushing these joints around. Okay, so one more time, let's do it from a different angle, maybe here. So, really important to keep things tight, right? And then step into the, uh, control the step into the wing. From here, open up, step your end, and manipulate. Now, I want you guys to watch my jawline. My jawline comes down to around this hip bone. So my face is manipulating this, and then my two hands manipulating this, and then this leg traps the ankle. So one more time. Go ahead, try that. So now you should get comfortable with it. Yeah, there you go. I'm gripping around your waist, not your legs. That's fine. It doesn't have to work with each each time. Your eyes, your eyes, don't just do the move. We're going to feel. Feel, feel. Nope. Okay, so whenever you have, I call it a monkey in the barrel, that, that game, that toy game that we used to play as a kid. Whenever we have some kind of monkey in the barrel concept, like arm drag or over under, like this, that means he has a small window to manipulate this. Okay, so he can wizard hard. Don't bring your hand down, but not too hard. Good. Okay, he can loop through. Nope, that's bad. Okay, do you want to hook on me? Underhook, yes. Good, okay, so I can try to shoot my hand in really fast. Okay, I can push, come in. Okay, what he did wrong was this. This is bad, because you're, you're detaching yourself. You're gonna get hit in the back of the head because you're not developing sensitivity. Unless, can you get the underhook on me? Yeah. Unless I'm gonna throw by and then boom, okay? But on the day the fight may not happen because the, the, there's only a small window for this kick, so the chance of failure is very high. So it is better to, to start running up to stuff like this. Go ahead, up, under, boom. You get what I'm saying? Because if you separate and kick, the kick only works around here. If, if, he, if he steps a little bit too close, you lost that sweet spot. The sweet spot's it's a very small space for you to attack your opponent and the chance of failure is very high. So what you want to do as a coach or a strategist is to analyze the success rate of a move based on how much time you're allowed to execute that move or the duration it takes to do that move or the amount of space. Certain move to execute that kick, you only have a very small window. And if you think you can pull it off the day of the fight, you're deceiving yourself. You have to pair it with moves that have a wider window of success, right? So let's practice the underhook. I'll get the underhook on you. Yeah, good, that's one. But what you want to do is make sure this elbow comes through. So somehow people have it. Yes, good. Or push my head over whip. Yes, and then get under, uh, yeah, I'm too short. Okay, get the underhook on me. Okay, boom, see? And the hook on me. So I'm here, boom. Right? I'm here, boom. I'm gonna control. And the hook on you. Okay, and boom. Good. Okay, uh, let's finish up. I, I, we, I kind of ramble, move on and on. Charlie's staying behind so that I can teach him some advanced stuff. Let's go back to our first drill the gate and tying and untying. Goodbye, goodbye.
No, 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 let's just go back to our first concept, like baby step in the garden. One, two. Yeah, let's just do that until you can do it in the dark. Then, when you feel it around your wrist bone, you're gonna go into the shoulder wrench. Yes, good, and notice it's too far. The minute your partner's too far, you're here. Turn your wrist bone, let me see my, my, my palm. He's still, he, he'll, he'll run farther back and he'll run, go back with this, no, no, yes, eventually he'll wrap my arm. So, I need to prevent that. So one more time, go ahead. Yep, right here, I'm gonna pull against his tricep and I'm here. Okay, and preferably turn to the elbows down so that you have, your chance of getting joint lock is less. Now, if you know judo, boom, one, two, three, four, <laughs> right? And this is why uh, learning judo and wrestling is so important. Um, I know when I was watching uh, MMA when it first came out, uh, there was a guy, his name is Mark, uh, what's, whatever his name is, making fun of judo because he didn't understand the judo is more than just throws. It's the, it's the in, in, induction, it's the inducement of movement. A lot of people, when they look at martial art, they think it's a technique. A, a true martial art is formless, there's no technique. It's about how your body feels the move and it becomes part of you, right? So I'll tell you guys a little Zen story. So there's a Zen master, you know, he teaches calligraphy and he died. And uh, he, had, like, he left behind 10 senior students. And they had to decide which 10, which one of the 10 senior students will carry the name of the school, right? And so they asked all the students, like the whole school asked the top 10 students, the senior students, to like, do a calligraphy artwork, right? So that way they can pick the, the number one students to lead the school because the master died. And what happened was uh, nine of the 10 students all tried to copy exactly what the master did. Like the same stroke, the same pressure. If you do Chinese calligraphy, it's super the pain in the ass, super hard, because you're painting on rice paper with a, with a little soft brush, and it's very unforgiving. If you go to art school, you do watercolor, watercolor is very unforgiving. And uh, they were all judging on how close they can copy the master. And then one of the students, the top students, painted completely different things that they had never seen before. And everyone was shocked and everyone said, what are you doing? You are not preserving the legacy of our school. You're like painting whatever. And he goes, listen, you fail to understand what the master of Sunset taught. It's not about copying him. It's about embodying his spirit so that you become your own being. Right? And so a lot of times when beginners, uh, I go on these uh, Facebook uh, forums and stuff and they all argue about techniques like Muay Thai kicks better than karate kicks or whatever. But a true practitioner understand that techniques, you, you, they understand that at the end of the day it's formless. Okay? Techniques do not bound you. It's the ability to absorb whatever is taught so that it becomes you. So at the end of the day, it's not a karate kick or a Muay Thai kick. It's just an execution of a kick. And now, at the end of it, because we need to be educated, we just happen to choose someone to show us, right? But a true master will show you, but at the same time stand back and let you kind of develop your own path, right? Uh, I talk too much, Charlie. Uh, we spent about 10 minutes. Uh, I like to get feedback from my students because I tend to ramble and then I forget if my students actually learn anything from me. Anyways, uh, uh, look at the camera and just say one or two things you learn or one or two things you want to practice or one or two things that I, I, I know I taught all these moves before but I, I'm, I'm combining them differently each time right so specifically about this about what you just learned like the last 10 15 minutes uh, obviously we spent an hour and a half doing other stuff but let's just focus just on this right hmm. oh I taught you the Hoopa Lupa right last week but yeah. I didn't teach you how to Put it into play to wrestling and joint locks and stuff, right? Uh, I have no idea. I <laughs> have no idea, okay. Yeah, it's like, you, can, you can show me something a hundred thousand times, but until like it's actually like fully 
absorbed. Yeah. I can't really say anything. So like everything they're showing me makes sense. Like how to keep yeah. it snug, yeah. where to you know push there, there, and there. Yeah. But without the ten thousand repetitions, I, I just don't know yet. Yeah. So there's two ways to look at move. There's isolating just that specific move, or there are ways to look at a whole bunch of ten transition point, right? And then somehow combine them together, right? And so there's two ways of operating. And my suggestion is to operate on both levels. If you're training elite fighters, we want them to get really good at specific things. But if you're training for someone to have deep insight into things, you want them to understand a lot of things, right? And it's all about resources. And the resources is time and money, right? And so, and also intelligence. There are people who are not very intelligent on train, so I only show like four or five moves, and I make them sure they know it really well, and then I make sure that they can use them the day of the fight. And there are other people who are very intelligent, and I, I just keep on pushing and pushing and giving them a lot of concept, a lot of ways to put it together, and then I also make sure, because they're so diligent, I also make sure that they work uh, the move well enough and high level enough so that they can use it on the day of the competition, all right? Anyways, guys, uh, I know I kind of ramble on and on. Um, my approach to martial arts is a little bit different. I've been doing martial arts now for, I started when I was 21. I'm 47 now, so that's 26 years. I think I stopped for two years when I was in art school. I was super busy. Uh, I was like a starting art student, but I still train. I, what I did was I just uh, went to the YMCA and, and bugged people to come train with me or say, hey, can I practice this move on you? Or can I do this or do this? You know, so, um, uh, but anyways, that's, this is my martial journey. I, I, I tend to look at things in a very holistic manner. I tend to, some people accuse me of not being loyal because I tend to look at things in like non-stylistically, but more of a functional uh, manner. I, I think it affect, uh, the way I look at it is because, partly because I uh, left the communist country when I was really young, so I hate following blind ideology, and I was also in a cult for five years, so I recognized cult-like ideology. Like, there are people who believe Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the greatest, you know, and they will like swear on their mother's grave. There are people who believe Muay Thai is the greatest, but they, they don't understand the moving parts of what makes it great. And for me, I dig in really deep. I'm trying to figure out the moving parts, you know, like getting back to that Bruce Lee's uh, uh, verbiage that say, when you cross the river with that boat, do not carry that river on your shoulder. Once you cross that river and that boat, leave the boat behind. Do not carry it, right? And a lot of people, you know, uh, it's like the U2 song. They, you know, they, they become a personal Jesus. They carry the cross on their back, but you don't have to carry that cross. You know, it's a very Zen-like concept, detachment, you know. Anyways, guys, I rambling on too much. <laughs> Charlie, uh, thank you so much for uh, staying behind. I think every time you stay behind, you learn extra stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to tell you guys something. Um, so Bruce Lee was very poor, right, when he came to America, and he couldn't really afford uh, tuition. But he had certain insight that people didn't have, but then he wanted to gain more insight. So what he did was that he would train with brown belts from different style of martial art, right? Because these brown belts were hungry, right? They were hungry, and they wanted extra knowledge so that they can get their black belt or when they spar they want that little edge and Bruce Lee couldn't afford to train at actual school or pay a sensei or a master so he'll always hang up with brown belt and, and like train knowledge okay and there's a running joke the most dangerous belt at a martial arts school is not the black belt it's the brown belt because the black belt already got the rank the black belt is chasing that rank so they're deadly enough right but they don't have that recognition yet and, and so, the brown belt, ironically, are the people you want to train with because they're the most hungry. They're so close to getting that belt, having someone pat on their back and say, you're there, you represent our style, right? And, and, and the brown belt are the, are, the, are the epitome. Well, I'm talking about legit martial arts school, not martial arts school that hands up black belt like candies. Anyways, guys, I hope you like my video, and I will catch up with you guys soon.